The internals of Lee Canary Memory Leak Library. Prerequisites. You must have read the documentation at swear.github.io slash Lee Canary and have a good understanding of it. The content presented here attempts to explore the source code behind the Lee Canary Library. Principal overview. The library automatically watches destroyed activities and destroyed fragments using weak references. You can also watch any instance that is no longer needed, e.g. a detached view. If the weak references aren't cleared after waiting 5 seconds and running the garbage collector, the watched instances are considered retained and potentially leaking. When the number of retained instances reaches a threshold, Leak Canary dumps the Java heap into a .hprof file stored in the file system. The default threshold is 5 retained instances when the app is visible, 1 otherwise. Lee Canary parses the HPROF file and finds the chain of references that prevents retained instances from being garbage collected, leak trace. A leak trace is technically the shortest strong reference path for GC routes to retained instances. Once the leak trace is determined, Lee Canary uses its built-in knowledge of the Android framework to detect which instances in the leak trace are leaking. Using the reachability information, Lee Canary narrows down the reference chain to a subchain of possible leak causes and displays the result. Leaks are grouped by identical subchains. Understanding the source code. After the activity destroys, the weak reference of the activity is associated with the reference queue so that the activity will appear in the reference queue before being garbage collected. Subsequently, a runnable to be executed after 5 seconds will be thrown into the main thread to detect memory leaks. The code first removes the object that appears in the reference queue from the observation object array and then determines whether the object to be observed exists. If it does not exist, it means that there will be no memory leak. After 50 milliseconds to 100 milliseconds, it will be judged based on the reference queue again. If it still appears to be in the reference queue, then there is a memory leak. At this time, a notification will pop up based on the number of memory leaks and start dump HPROF. The new Leak Canary library does not need to be initiated by adding the Leak Canary.install this to the application. So what is used to automatically initialize following the starting of the app? The principle is to use the feature of content provider to be instantiated with a process startup to achieve unaware initialization. Content providers are loaded before the application class is created. App Watch Installer is a sealed class that inherits the content provider. In addition to the initialization processing of the content provider, the onCreate method, the curate get type, insert, delete, update, and other methods of content provider implemented in AppWatch Installer are just empty implementations. The initialization code in the onCreate method is AppWatcher.manual install application. AppWatcher.manual install application method completes the initialization operation of Lee Canary. The method of activity destroy watcher .install is in the companion object in the activity destroy watcher. In the install method, the monitoring of activity like cycle is registered through the application .register activity lifecycle callbacks, and the open watcher .watch method is called to start monitoring the activity. If the system is Android O or later, use Android O fragment destroy watcher. If the app uses fragments of Android X, add the corresponding Android X fragment destroy watcher. If you use fragments in the support library, add Android support fragments destroy watcher. Then register the activity lifecycle listener and start to listen to the fragment of activity on the on activity created. The above is one of Lee Canary's important code. One. Save the object to be observed using the weak reference and pass in a reference queue during construction, so that the object to be observed will appear in the reference queue before being recycled. 2. After 5 seconds, check whether it appears in the reference queue. If it does not, there is no leak. Call remove weakly reachable objects to remove the reference to watched objects that will be garbage collected. Generate keyed weak reference for the object to be observed and add it to watched objects. Use check retained executor to execute move to retained regularly. Call the remove weakly reachable objects method to remove the recycled objects from the queue and delete them from the watched object multiple times. Move to retained key string method once again to remove the reference from watched objects that will be in GC. Then take out the retained ref that has not been recycled and execute 
on object retained listeners dot on object retained. When the five seconds are up, first remove the objects in the reference queue from the map because they have no memory leaks. Then determine whether the key is still in the map. If it is, it means that a memory leak may have occurred. At this point, note the time when the memory leak occurred. That is, update the retained uptime millis field, and then notify all objects that a memory leak has occurred. This schedule retained object check method is used to execute the check retained objects method in the background thread to check the leaked objects. One, first to get the number of leaked objects. If it is greater than zero, get it again after garbage collection. Two. If the number of leaked objects at this time is greater than or equal to 5 config.retain visible threshold, then continue to execute the code to prepare dump heap. How does this code get the number of leaked objects? All the leaked objects are recorded and stored in the retained uptime millis field. We traverse all the elements and count the number of fields that are not the default value, negative 1. If there is a memory leak, the gc trigger.run gc method will be called. Now here, after a series of conditions, dump heap is performed. Heap analysis service run analysis starts a foreground service to analyze dump files. We no longer use HaHa library for analysis, but instead use the shark library. Hello everybody, this is Smitnov. I narrated this video. Go click on my channel in the link in description. It's a pretty cool channel. N new videos will come out pretty soon. None yet, but pretty soon. Go, go check it out. It'd be pretty nice, you know?